And welcome back to a special edition of Outfront live from Israel. We've got breaking news. We are now learning that the death toll from the Hamas attacks on Israel has gone up significantly. That number is now at least 1,200 people, according to an Israeli public broadcaster. And we had been saying about 1,000, so that uh, number going up by at least 200 here. And it comes as, as questions grow about who was behind the attack. And uh, today, Vladimir Putin had a very tepid response to Hamas's attack, which killed at least two Russian citizens. Fred Pleitgen is out front. After hundreds of Israelis were slaughtered by Hamas near Gaza, condemnation and condolences poured in from around the world, but not from Russian leader Vladimir Putin. Now, in his first comments, instead of empathy, Putin blasting the U.S. This is a clear example of the failure of the United States policy in the Middle East, which tried to monopolize any settlement between Israelis and Palestinians. Kremlin-controlled TV following suit, mocking both America and Israel for allegedly being caught off guard by Hamas's attack. Mossad and its famous counterintelligence, as well as the U.S. and its CIA, slept through Hamas's invasion. It's the biggest Israeli failure in security since 1973. Russia has long been allied with Israel's staunchest adversaries and Hamas's most important backers, bombing Syrian rebels in support of pro-Iranian fighters battling on the side of Syrian President Bashar al-Assad during Syria's civil war. But Russia also maintained strong ties and security arrangements with Israel. Putin meeting Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu on many occasions. We in no way uh, underestimate the importance uh, of uh, measures that would ensure uh, very strong security of the state of Israel. But since Putin launched his full-scale war against Ukraine, Tehran has become a key ally for Moscow at Israel's expense, fostering economic and military ties with Iran, while Tehran provides the Russian army with scores of Shahed drones the Russians use to hit Ukrainian cities and infrastructure, Kiev says, even though Tehran denies it. Ukraine's president, Volodymyr Zelensky, claiming Moscow's allegiance in the Middle East has shifted towards Tehran. We see how Russian propagandists are gloating. We witness how Moscow's Iranian allies openly lend support to those who attacked Israel. And Aaron, the Kremlin has denied Vladimir Zelensky's allegations that the Russians are trying to inflame the situations between the Israelis and the Palestinians. However, the former chief rabbi of Moscow, who, of course, fled Russia about two weeks after the full-on invasion of Ukraine, he today said that the lack of show of support of Russia for Israel is an ominous sign of deteriorating relations between those countries. Aaron? Fred, thank you very much. And out front now, the former Israeli ambassador to the United Nations and Israel's former deputy defense minister, Danny Danone. And I, I really appreciate your time, Ambassador. So um, Fred's reporting Russian citizens are killed in the attack. Putin um, silent, uh, really, for days. Um, many Russians live in Israel. There are very close ties between those two countries uh, as well. And yet Putin showing virtually no sympathy at all for Israel. Nothing at this point. Why do you think that is? This is unacceptable. We have witnessed a whole attack against Israelis. 1,200 people were killed, butchered in a daylight. So we expect more than a leader. We saw President Biden's speech, and we appreciated his speech. It was very emotional. It was a remarkable speech, I have to tell you, because we are still digesting uh, those attacks. It was very hard for us. The pain is still in mm -hmm. our stomach, and we are grateful for the support coming from the U.S., from Europe, from more, almost all over the world. I cannot explain Putin's behavior. So, um, Fred Pleitgen pointed out, Russia's long been allied with Iran, and of course we've seen that um, intensify, mm -hmm. if I could use that word, uh, with the Ukraine war as well. Uh, Iran is the key backer of Hamas. Do you think that um, if Iran had any advanced knowledge, that Russia would have had advanced knowledge? I mean, do you see any ties here that you're starting to tie together? Well, Iran is very involved in what's happening here. 
They are funding Hamas and Hezbollah for years. They are training Hamas operatives. We know that Hamas experts went to Tehran to get training about explosives and other things. So yeah. we know Iran is involved. And maybe, I don't know for sure, but maybe what we saw in the last few weeks, the relationship between Israel and Saudi Arabia, it wasn't very good for Iran. So maybe that is the reason for the timing, because it was mm. an unprovoked attack against Israel. Nobody can find logic for the timing of this vicious attack. So how, how involved do you think Iran was? I mean, the White House has been careful. They, they, they've sort of said that there's ambiguous ties, that the Iran is broadly in complicit, but that there's no intelligence directly linking uh, Iran to this actual attack. Do you buy that? No. When you fund uh, Hamas and you give them uh, hundreds of millions of dollars every year, you control Hamas. So basically, both Hamas and Hezbollah are proxies of Tehran. They control them. And that is why we're sending a very clear message today to Hezbollah and to Tehran. Watch very carefully what will happen in Gaza. Don't mess with us. We are not playing anymore. We're going to hunt down Hamas. And if anyone will try to play with us, mm. either from north or somewhere else, he will be under our guns as well. So as you are massing IDF forces, paratroopers, snipers along that Gaza border, um, is there anything that will be off limits when, if, I assume at this point it's when, Israel goes in? We will do whatever is necessary to eliminate Hamas. We're going to come from the sea, we're going to come from the land, we're going to come from the air, we're going to hunt them down. They butchered 1,200 Israelis and they went to the communities. They didn't attack soldiers, they attacked women. Today we, we actually saw the pictures of innocent babies that were tied up and burned alive. Those are animals. We have to fight them, we have to hunt them down, and we are committed to do it. You know, we are still in, in pain, in shock, mm -hmm. and I think uh, in a few days we will start to show the might of the IDF, the strength of the Israeli people. We put politics aside now, we are united, and we're going to go into war against Hamas. Ambassador Danone, thank you very much. I appreciate your time. 